Can I ask you, family, to pray for me? My voice is a little bit weakish, so I can feel it a little. It's going, but I know my spirit is willing, but my voice vocal cords are weak. <laughs> so can you guys just stretch out your hands and just pray for me? Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just ask that you would um, just use your um, healing oil and just flow from Mishi's head all the way to her throat and to her whole body. Holy Spirit, we just acknowledge your presence. And thank you, Lord, that whatever you put in Mishi's heart, Lord, just give her the freedom to release it. Amen. Anoint her voice, anoint her heart and also touch every one of our hearts that you would speak to us through me, Mishi's sharing. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. <clears throat> Glory, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. As I was just praying, Asking the Lord what's on his heart. Ooh, can you hear? Wow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It just, it just went back. I was like, wow, it's back. Hallelujah. I was asking Papa about what was on his heart for my family, what is key in this new season. And for those who have been joining us online at Loft, they know we're going through a major shift. Amen transformation in this new year which is what what year is this 5782 what has been spoken of this year is a year of transformation can you say transformation, transformation. and what is transformation to take one thing and completely create a brand new thing right it's not just recycling where it's the old and you keep some parts but it's completely made new Another word for transformation is metamorphosis. Can you say metamorphosis? metamorphosis? And when you think of that word, what do you guys picture in your mind? Metamorphosis. Yeah, ladies, go ahead. A caterpillar. And then I heard PC back there say what? What did you say? Butterfly. <laughs> yes, a butterfly, which was such an amazing picture, right? No one but the Lord can imagine this squishy, chubby thing turning into this beautiful thing, right? With wings, like of all these different colors, like this squishy, chubby little guy that as they're moving along and they, they go into this process of transformation, be made brand new into this incredible thing that can fly, right? Have you guys ever gone to the um, Academy of Science? Have you been there? Yeah. I remember um, going up into the atrium and like, I was like, Lord, I want a butterfly to land on me. And then the moment I said that, a butterfly landed on me. It was like, it was like right here. It was awesome. It was like right there. And so like, I got to see this up close and no one could see from looking at a butterfly can imagine where it began, right? So I look at this family and the Lord's saying it's time for transformation. And I can't even imagine what he's gonna bring us into. But I know from scripture, it's gonna be more glorious, amen? On Friday, I shared with the kids that that Friday was our very last loft officially. After 12 years, over a decade of us doing youth ministry in that kind of format, that that was the last time. And I didn't expect to cry. <laughs> but all of a sudden, I'm like talking to the high school students and I just start getting emotional, like moved. Because for me, I'm just, I'm excited. Like I'm excited for what God is about to do. Because I know it's just one of those things, the suddenly of God. 
you know, where he re he's going to release something I can't even picture in my mind. But as I was sitting and I was looking at some of these faces, especially the high schoolers and even the college kids that I've walked with for a decade, I looked into their faces and I just started crying because <laughs> I realized that there was there needed in order for the new something had to be laid down and to give way to right. And I thought about all those years we gathered and, and saw encounters like the retreats that we saw as a family, those worship nights and some worship gatherings in my in my bedroom. You guys remember that in the summer? Like all these different times, an incredible encounter. I started to cry, not because I think that those things are dying, but if those things being so wonderful, the Lord is allowing us to let go of, what are the more amazing things that are to come? Amen? Like, I can't even put into words like what I, what I believe is going to be about to be released. And each of you, look at your neighbor, say, you, you. are going to be part of that process. Yeah. We who were once chubby caterpillars <laughs> are going into a cocoon. And what will emerge cannot compare to what was former. Amen? but we got to be willing to enter into that process. And what is this process? The word that the Lord kept coming up over and over again is sanctification. Can you say sanctification? sanctification. Now, who knows what sanctification is? Anybody? My biblical scholars. No one knows sanctification. Being more like God. Whose guess was that? Sunny. Being more like God. Do you guys agree? Disagree? Agree. Anyone want to add on? That was a great beginning, Sunny. Thank you for being brave. Anyone else want to add on to it? When does it begin, sanctification? Anyone know? All right, this is why y'all need to pull out your notebooks <laughs> and take some notes. Do you have it? This is important. Y'all, this is, this is Christianity 101. Can you tell me this? Is justification and sanctification the same? No. So what's the difference? What's justification? Is important. Y'all know it's not the same, right? You just said justification, sanctification, not the same. So what's the difference? Yeah, Aaron. <laughs> That's a good observation. One begins with a J, one begins with an S. Okay, all right. Any other differences that you know or can tell or can see? Nobody. All right. We're going to go through some Bible. Here we go. <laughs> Take out your notebook. Justification. Write it down. It's a legal standing. This is important. And it happens once and for all. Does that make sense? Justification, a legal standing, happens once and for all. There's theoretical debate about that, but we're not going to get into it. I believe the scripture speaks clearly that it's once and it's for all. It's entirely a work of God. It's perfect in this life. And all of us, every single believer, when you come to Jesus, your legal position before God has now changed. Say changed. changed. And how has it changed? Can someone tell me that? Anybody? How has my legal standing before God changed? 
What is the penalty of sin? Very good. So before God, because I'm a sinner, I am guilty and therefore have to pay the penalty of? So God, who is a righteous judge, the only one worthy to judge, me standing in front of him, I am guilty if I've sinned. Is that right? So our legal standing before God that one day we will face not just physical death, but eternal death, which is separation from God for all eternity, right? This is my legal standing before God, that I would experience utter darkness because he is, he is unapproachable light, right? That if no intervention, this is where my destiny is going. This is important, my family, because you think you know this, but I'm asking you and I'm getting blank stares. <laughs> yeah. So the next time I ask you what justification is, you're going to say what? No, <laughs> not that it begins with a J. What is justification? One more time. It's my legal standing before God that when Jesus died upon the cross, he took my place. It's no longer me standing before the judgment seat. But when I receive Jesus into my heart, he takes my place. Do you understand that? Like when Jesus died on the cross, he died for you, he died for me. But to know that he took my place when he stands, when I stand before the judgment seat of God, the Lord will see me through Jesus, his life that he gave up for me. Amen? That is justification. That because of what Jesus did, that by faith, I receive what he's done on my behalf and now my position before god has changed i go from an enemy to god to now his child his beloved the one in whom he is well pleased all the things that he said about his son jesus that's how he sees me is that amazing amen that happens the moment you come to know him. That's justification. My position's changed. But what is sanctification? What do you think, Chloe? Being clean or being made clean? Amen. Can y'all say amen? amen? So though my legal position has now changed, am I still able to sin? Yes, that I'm still able to live in my old self, in my, my old life, in my old patterns. Even though that's been gone, we in our human weakness, we live in that cycle. Does that make sense? So sanctification is being made clean. And it's going from this caterpillar in the process of butterfly. If you can imagine, it's what's happening when that butterfly now goes into the cocoon. Does that make sense? It's the cocoon process. The old stuff is being stripped off and the new stuff is being released. Sanctification. Can you say sanctification? sanctification. And I think the reason why the Lord spoke it over us as a family is we treat sanctification like justification. Do you get what I mean by that? We don't see it as a process. We think that it's already done. We just stop halfway through. Can you imagine if one of those chubby butterflies jumped out of the chrysalis and it's like half a caterpillar, half butterfly? <laughs> Have you all seen that? That would be gross and that would be weird. But that is what we do as Christians. We receive the salvation that Jesus purchased on the cross. We believe in what he's done, so no longer do we have to pay the penalty of death, but we stop there. We don't allow the process of sanctification to do the most miraculous thing, which is now we can look and be made into looking more and more and more like Jesus. Amen? 
Can you stand up? Everybody, just stand. If this is what you want, you want to be made more and more like Jesus, I want you to yell it at the top of your lungs. Yell it out to the Lord. Ready? One, two, three. Amen. Can we do it one more time? I want to be more like Jesus. Yes, Lord, that this is our cry. You can have a seat. Our cry, our desire, the whole point of why we walk with the Lord is so that we can look more and more like Jesus. Amen. Let's look at 1 John 3, 9. My husband was reading this passage with his, with his men's Bible study group. And it like, it like connected so deeply with what I feel the Lord is saying. So can we read it together? No one born of God makes a practice of sinning for God's seed abides in him and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. Amen. Can we look at 1 Corinthians 6, 11? And such were some of you, but you were washed. Say it again. You were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our, amen, by the spirit of our God. We have been washed, we have been sanctified. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning. When you read this, do you hold it like a mirror to your life? Do you know, we just read it out loud, my junior high men, we just read this out loud. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning for God's seed abides in him. He cannot, say cannot. He cannot keep sinning because he has been born of God. Does that mean that we are perfect? No. But what about Matthew 548? Do you know what that says? Who knows what that says? Anybody? You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Jesus said this. Is Jesus setting an impossible standard? Second Corinthians 7, 1 says this, since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of the Lord. When Jesus says, be perfect as my father is perfect, I believe what he's saying is abide. Can you say abide? He, is, he has given us an impossible task, made possible, but only by his spirit. Amen? That we can be perfected in love if we would give ourselves to the process of sanctification. So when I ask you, when you read that passage, do you use it as a mirror in your life? Today, do you look more like Jesus than you did yesterday? That's a question that only you can answer and you can only ask yourself, right? I don't live in, in Deborah's room. <laughs> I can't watch you and see, is Deborah really living before the Lord? Like, is she loving God more today? Like, I can't do that, right? Like, there's no way. Only you yourself can examine your own heart, right? And to ask yourself, God, am I loving you more today than I did yesterday? That's what sanctification is. It's a continual process that doesn't 
stop until we see him face to face. Amen? So he asked me to ask you, where are you now in this process of being made like Jesus? Have you been the deformed caterpillar who's popped out of the process and got satisfied in being half done? Can you say rest and press? Because when you hear what I'm saying, you might feel all this pressure of like, oh man, like I have to perform now. Like if I'm going to get sanctified, I got to read my Bible. I got to do all these things. But sanctification is two things. It's rest and press. Say it again. We have to rest in knowing that only the Lord can make me look more like the Lord, right? Like I can't do it. I can't like, I can't, I could pretend and put on a lot of masks to make me look holy. Like I could show up here and I could be all kachi and look like so cute and give me all the smiles. And then when I, when me, she's like, shout it out. Like, and you're like, yes, make me more like Jesus. You could do all those things, but we all know that we can pretend, right? And make it about doing the things. But on the inside, your heart is disconnected from the Lord. Does that make sense? Are you following me? So the resting of, God, I can't do this, but you want to. And I want to surrender to you making me more holy. I don't want to stay where I am. This is a surrender. Can you say surrender? That's the beautiful rest part. But today, I want to talk about the press, okay? And the press is this pressing in to move forward. Philippians 3.12 is my life verse. And so I want us to read it together. Can we read it? Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. What I'm pressing into is that I want to love him the way he loves me. And I want to love people the way that he loves people. And I don't ever want to get comfortable in thinking that I'm doing enough. Does that make sense? It's a very hard tension. And it has to come out of the rest. Jesus desires me to be with him where he is, that we would love and we would look like him, that the world would marvel at his beautiful bride. Amen? That they would marvel at this kind of love that they have never even seen or heard of before. But I press in so that we could see more and more of it in reality right here. Amen? Marriage has been a beautiful already. It's been only a month, <laughs> but it's been a beautiful sanctification process for me. You don't know a person until you live with them, right? Yeah. And as I've been living with my beloved, not only am I knowing him more, I'm seeing myself more. Does that make sense? I'm seeing a lot of baggage that I thought I dealt with at the cross that I I haven't touched. Does that make sense? We all have that like junk drawer in the back. And <laughs> as I was moving out of my old apartment into our new home, I was like, I got a lot of junk drawers. <laughs> I thought I had one. I have like four bins of like junk stuff. I don't know how I accumulated. That's in the physical, but it was the same in like the spiritual. Does that make sense? And as 
I started living life and doing life with my husband, I was like, wow, there's a whole lot of junk I'm still carrying. One of the things um, that has blown me away, like I went into marriage thinking like, I'm going to be like the most amazing wife. <laughs> I'm going to get up early. I'm going to make like these beautiful meals like three times a day. I'm going to make our bed. I'm going to make a beautiful home. Like, you know what I mean? Like all y'all, all, all y'all ladies know what I'm talking about, right? Can I get an amen? Like I'm going to be an awesome wife. Like I'm going to do all the things and, 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 and all that. And then in real life, all the, all the wives say, that's not reality. Give me an amen. <laughs> they're all laughing because they're living. They know that's not reality. There are times where, like, I slept through all the alarms. Or, like, he's snoring, so I got no sleep. And I wake up, and I'm crumpy. <laughs> you know what I mean? or I'm snoring and then he's not sleeping. It's just, you know, it's not reality. <laughs> yeah, like I, th I had this idyllic picture and it came out of, it actually came out of a woundedness in me that I didn't realize was still there. That I had to prove my worthiness of being called Matthew's wife. Like I had to serve him all the time. If I wasn't serving him enough, then I would not be worthy of being his wife. Do you know what I mean? And that is some baggage that I've carried since my parents' marriage, right? Of watching their divorce and their relationship crumble and thinking, I don't wanna ever be like that. I'm going to do everything opposite of what they've done. And so in my mind, I didn't realize I created this, this expectation of like, I just have to keep serving him all the time or else he won't love me back. What I've learned is in the little things, I'm about to preach on Friday night. And like, I should have done like cleaning. Honestly, I did nothing. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like getting overwhelmed. I'm getting stressed out. What am I gonna speak? What am I gonna say? I walk into the room where I'm gonna do the thing and he's like set up my computer. He's like plugged in the light. He's put like a drink of water. And like, he's like, darling, how can I serve you? Yeah, you could all say, aww. Yes. Literally, I never asked him to do that, but he will do that just to love me. Or like, I do do all the cooking. <laughs> I have made meals, but they're not amazing. <laughs> Even though to him, he's like, oh my gosh, that's the best thing I've tasted. Literally, I'm just like, I'm taking the udon noodles from like Costco. And just like throwing some stuff in it, like you know, I have learned some tricks from Jiping. Like you take like these pre-made things and you make it look gourmet, but it is not. <laughs> they have been very great. Like I was like, I thought I would be like making awesome food for him every single day, but I don't have the capacity. I'm just like, I look, I open the fridge and I'm like, what do I have left? <laughs> What can I stick in with this and then like heat it and have food ready in like 30 minutes? So anyways, and he's always like, oh my gosh, this is the best food I've ever had. And my expectation is it's like I have to walk. I don't have to just cook. I have to wash dishes and I have to do all the things. He's always like, he's wiping down the tables, putting away the dishes and washing them and then putting them away before I could even like turn around. And I remember one of those days he did that and like, I was just like overwhelmed because as I saw him loving me, I felt the father say, that's how I serve you too. You don't have to do everything for me. I want to love you and you get to see it now with him.
sanctification. And it's beautifully done. So this is the rest part. And as I see him doing those things and loving me rightly, like it makes me want to love the Lord more. Amen? Because I feel so secure and I feel so safe. So sanctification, I believe, needs to be lived out in family, lived out with each other. It's not a process of just a caterpillar by itself going into its own cocoon. It's like, I don't know, how can you imagine all of us going into the pod and like helping to prod each other and be like, hey, you're not finished yet. Go back in. You know, like that's actually the beauty of what God purposed family to be. It's like the sanctification of it. Amen. It's the getting to look more and more like Jesus when we're doing it together. And I believe this is a season. We as a leadership team have recognized that we can't do this on our own, that we need each other so, so much more. In the last, I think, month of marriage, I feel like the Lord has healed so many areas of my life in such a short amount of time. That was just one of my baggages. I could share with you a lot more, you know? Like where I come and I feel just like unworthy. I don't look beautiful at all. I'm literally wearing sweats and like I look gross and greasy and he'll come to me and be like, you're gorgeous. (laughs) And I'm like, what? (laughs) He's like, how did I get so lucky to marry such a beautiful wife? And I'm like, I'm like, I'm pretty sure I have like stuff in my teeth and my hair is like a, a crazy mess. Like that's just another area, you know what I mean? In so many areas, the Lord has been using our marriage to sanctify me, that I would look more like Jesus, that I'd be more secure in my identity and love, amen? So my question is, as a family, have we been those sanctification ovens to each other? can we be more so amen where we're loving him and loving one another so much so that every time we gather we're going to look more and more like jesus amen that individually we're doing our time with the lord alone but then when we come together we are pressing say press It's this intentionality. I'm leaning in to loving so much so that when we gather, we're loving each other just a little bit more deeply. Amen? Amen. That we're encouraging each other to go a little bit further. We take a few more steps forward so that we would look more like Jesus. Amen? That's what community is about and why Jesus said, don't forsake the fellowship. It's not just about our of us getting to feast which is awesome. We all love the feast, right? But what about the iron sharpening iron? Yeah? (laughs) It's like, no. That's honest. It's not fun sometimes. But we need it, amen? Because we lazy people like that weird deformed character will give up, like Caterpillar, will give up halfway through and miss the fullness of what the Lord prepared for us. Amen. Someone else in my life the Lord has brought to help sanctify me is Mama Martina. I did not expect her to be here today. But man, this woman has loved me into my calling and into my identity. Like this last season, I've just been amazed at how the Lord has been bringing us together. 
and we've been together for a long time. Like I've, I've known you since I've moved here, right? <laughs> like 2009, like we've known each other for a long time, but I think we had, there were so many walls and barriers that had been built up, misunderstanding and miscommunication and just cultural baggages and also just fears. I think fears that I had of like, what does she really think about me? And like fears that she had of like, will she understand me? <laughs> like there were just all of these, these things that kept us like separated. But I am so thankful the Lord bringing her to be a spiritual mom to me in this season. Talk about a relationship that produces sanctification. Like she pursues me, she presses in. She'd be like, Mishi, come to my house and eat dinner. <laughs> or come to my house, have lunch. You and Matthew, come, 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 come. And it's just been like overwhelming to me because I know she's a busy lady and she has many people she has to, you know, care for. But she's sacrificially like loving me. The other day we had um, prayed about as leaders you know, we had prayed about which of the five full ministries that we have, like what's our primary? And when I was asking the Lord, I thought my primary, like out of the five full ministry would probably be like pastoral, right? Cause that's kind of what I do. <laughs> or prophetic, cause that's an area that I know the Lord's highlighted that I have gifting in. But as we were praying amongst the leaders, I heard the Lord say apostolic. I heard the Holy Spirit say apostolic, and that scared me like crazy. Ethan? <laughs> what does apostolic mean? Oh, that's a good question. So apostolic is like Paul, right? Paul was an apostle. So if you look in Ephesians chapter three, it talks about like the fivefold ministries, and each one has a specific role. Like pastors, what do pastors do? They care and they shepherd people, right? And then there are teachers, right, who teach, right? And then there are evangelists who go out and they share the gospel and they bring the lost in, right? And there are prophets who have, you know, prophetic insight. They have the seeing gift. They could speak the things of the prophetic as well as apostles. So apostles are like, how do you describe it? Like Paul, you come and you release something and you give structure to it. Does that make sense? And oftentimes you're doing a new thing. To be quite honest, Ethan, I don't really know I'm learning right now. Because <laughs> I heard apostle and I was like, I don't know. And so Mama Grace was like, okay, go into your group. And I'm sitting with Pastor Martina and Mama Grace and I'm like, what am I doing here? <laughs> like, why am I here? But I just wanted to be obedient. After I heard that though, I got, I honestly got overwhelmed. Like I don't, again, my old nature of feeling like I'm disqualified. I don't feel worthy. I don't feel worthy up to my call started to hit me and I started to shrink back. It might have not been seen in the physical, but I think I know in the spiritual. And as a spiritual mama, she just laser focus called me out. <laughs> After that whole meeting, I was just like, God, this is so much. I feel burdened. I can't do this. And with laser focus, she just called me out. And it was so sweet. It was just at this like supper table. And she said, Mishi, I want to love you and not let you give up on your calling. I don't want you to fall into your second or third choice. I want you to live for your first calling. How can I love you and support you so that you will? That's a sanctifying love. Amen? That was the very thing I needed to like encourage me to like, all right, I'm going to step up. So today, when I realized we made a snafu in scheduling, we had no one for worship. It's like, amen doing a new thing. I'm going to jump up there. I don't know what I'm doing. And then I'm going to jump up here and then I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm just going to be willing. Amen? Amen. 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 Sanctification. Can you say it again? It is a process. It should be us pressing in 
and in rest, but we should continue to do it, amen? That we're loving Jesus more today than we did yesterday. Can you put up that uh, Corinthians passage, my friend? Can we read 2 Corinthians 3.18? Let's read it together. And we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is, amen. I am praying for our family that we would go from one degree of glory to the next. And it can't be one person doing it. It is all of us pressing in together for it. Amen? That not just individually would the Lord sanctify us to look more like him, but together that we would look more like him. I just wanna invite you guys to find some space. Can we turn down the lights a little bit? If Anna or Mama Martina, Chris, you guys have a word, y'all feel free to grab the mic or Bri Bri. Would you think, Stephen, if you guys have a word, come up. <clears throat> I just want to invite us to respond. Could you do this? Would it help you if you guys find another space in the room? Just want you to talk to the Lord, because it means nothing if it's just me up here teaching you guys. Amen? So go ahead, separate, find some space. <clears throat> Bryson, can you help me to put something in the background? Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Would you sanctify your church? Would you sanctify your bride? Would you come and purify, wash us again? Holy Spirit, we just invite you, wherever you are in the room, to start inviting Holy Spirit to come. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come. We invite you to come. Come fill this room, fill this place. Go ahead. You can open your mouth and just invite Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. Lord, we thank you you're already here, but Lord, we want more. We want more of you, Holy Spirit. We invite you, Jesus, come. Come, open up our eyes of understanding, God. Open up our eyes to seeing you. Rightly, we invite you, Jesus. We invite you, Holy Spirit. song comes to mind um <clears throat> i wanna be tried by fire purified take whatever you desire 
Lord, here's my life. I want to be tried by the fire, purified. You take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. Yes, Lord. Lord, here's our lives, God. So it's kind of interesting that Mishi shared about the butterfly because uh, just yesterday, uh, one of the ministers asked me because her son's been seeing butterflies a lot in their prayers. And it's amazing, 5782 is a year transformation. So as we learn about the caterpillar becoming a butterfly, do you guys know how it does it? What does the, the caterpillar have to go through? It's a grow its wings and how? Huh? Eat? It has to go into the cocoon, right? So what happened? Did you, do you see the caterpillar once the butterfly comes out? Do you see the cat? Where did the caterpillar go? But how? It's actually, if you look, do some research on your own. It's a total death of the caterpillar. You don't see the caterpillar anymore. It's a totally different creature coming out of the cocoon. And that's one of the amazing things about a butterfly is that it went through what transformation, part of the transformation and sanctification is dying. We don't like to hear this word. I don't like to hear this word myself. And just earlier in the worship team, we were just talking about like, we know what to do when we need to leave worship. We'll just receive a few songs and lead and practice. But, you know, many of us are feeling tired of going into routines, the old stuff. So a lot, especially for those of you as an adults, you've been here a long time. Don't you feel sometimes a lot of things are going into routine and we already expect what's going to happen, whether it's in church or in young lives. And for the younger ones, um, any of the age, you know, one of the things about dying is you don't feel comfortable. <laughs> it's not comfortable. Elvin was sharing with us. It's not comfortable to not know what song to lead when you're standing on stage, because you should be prepared. You should not let the whole team know what kind of song. You're not intentional for not getting a new a song to lead. You just that you don't want to live in the old pattern, the low routine. So I just feel like Holy Spirit wants to speak to every one of us. You know, Miss she shared two examples, her husband and um, Mama Martina, they are depositing into her life and shedding light on her to see, wow, there are areas in her life that she's still carrying the old baggage to want to perform. But what about some of the not very comfortable people that you have to encounter, not very comfortable environment, you know, for the students out here, uh, a lot of challenges in your academics or for the adults, you know, somebody just like <laughs> whether it's in your family or workplace, just you don't, f you hope that person's not there. <laughs> you hope that that project is not so heavy. That's something that's not comfortable. 
Can we just have a moment to ask the Holy Spirit to show us? Could it be that particular person or that particular circumstance is God's instrument for that process of transformation? Could it be that He intentionally allowed that to happen, not to make us feel bad, but maybe there's something old that He's trying to help us strip off, so that we can receive new. Okay. We can have the music and we'll just go into a time of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord. In this time of the year, we get to reset. We get to truly lay down the old and go into the new. But Lord, a lot of times I don't even know what is the old. I feel so comfortable with the old. I hold on to them so tight. Lord, would you reveal to every one of us, as we step into the new year, what is that old thing that I need to let go? Whether it's how I see myself, treat myself, how I see my circumstance. And the people that you place in my life, what is that old thing that you want to strip off? Holy Spirit, would you come and shed your light? So um, I'm inviting all of you to find another partner. It can be a family member, or it can be someone else that you want that you feel comfortable. Just briefly share what the Holy Spirit show you, and then pray with each other. Uh, for me, uh, like He just showed me, like I'm very, uh, uh, how do I say? It? I'm very reserved. My personality is very reserved. For me to grab the mic is not the norm. So Holy Spirit is showing me that there's a lot of my mentality is still very reserved, and He wants me to be more assertive.、Um, and a lot of times I give up on some ideas. So that's one thing God is showing me. So whatever God just show you, would you share with your partner, and then just pray for each other? If your husband or wife is in the room. That would be a good person to pray with, or it's people in your life that you want to walk with in the sanctification process. And the choice, in order to be able to really pray and have impact in that process, is we got to be willing to be vulnerable with that person. The places where we're weak, we have to be vulnerable in sharing with each other. This is an area I need breakthrough. These are some of the old things in my life that the Lord is highlighting. That needs to be shed, so that new life can actually come in. So, take hold of this precious time where you can pray for each other. What are those areas that need to be shed? Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you, Father, for this process of being sanctified, being made to look more and more like you, Jesus. And Lord, we just come in agreement with what the Spirit is saying. We say yes, Jesus. We want to be made more and more like you, God. So would you continue to help us to shed the old things that get in the way? Lord, help us as a family, as a community, as、uh, your precious sons and daughters living life together. Help us to encourage each other in this process of being made more and more into your image. Help us to challenge and encourage and、um, sharpen one another, so that we would be a faithful witness to you. 
that our lives would reflect your beauty, your glory. Lord, we love you. We thank you for just this beautiful work you're doing in us. Help us to stay faithful in it as you are faithful, God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.